Welcome back to the Sunday Footy Show, and we're going to take a look at the match at the MCG last night between Geelong and Collingwood. It was a massive one. The Pies got out of the gates as quick as a rabbit brownie, and Geelong couldn't make up the ground. Yeah, they certainly did. They got out to 56 points up as we see the results there. Ended up being a 31 point victory. Daisy Thomas kicked three. Tarrant was very good down forward. Beams kicked two. Dane Swan had 40. Penderbury 36, and Beams keeps going. James Kelly had 38. Stevie Johnson had 36. But uh, we're going to add in the super coach points. Geelong, uh, James Kelly on the back of those points. 140, Stevie J had 140. And also Beams, 137. Heath Shaw, Pendlebury, Dane Swan and Darren Jolly. But a very special guest, a man who plays down back, sometimes goes forward, but a very, very big cog in the Collingwood defence. And that's Ben Reid. Welcome to the Sunday Footy Show. Thanks for having me. A good win last night, particularly the start. The first quarter, uh, seven goals. You, 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 you run and carry in that first quarter. Your structures, the way you set up was just pretty much a perfect quarter of footy. Yeah, that was the biggest thing, our structures. We uh, really stuck them and um, you know, did the things that Bucks sort of implemented during the week. And the boys credit, they were able to carry that out the first quarter and we had probably our best quarter for the year. What was different between the week before Carlton? Uh, the, uh, obviously, they set up differently, but what was said during the week to make sure that, that wasn't a repeat performance? I suppose last week was pretty disappointing. Um, we didn't play you know, our best footy at all. Um, so all week was the focus on coming out and uh, you know, giving a red-hot crack to um, Geelong. And yeah, so the boys credit, as I said, we were able to get the job done. Knowing, knowing Bucks, a very competitive man, he'd be very happy with the first half but I reckon he wouldn't be that happy with the second half. Yeah, the first half, I suppose, um, everything was clicking. The, the second half, I don't know whether it was a mental thing or a physical thing, but we, we switched off that little bit, and um, you can't really afford to do that when it comes to the point of the season, so it's something we've got to address, and uh, hopefully we do. Your efficiency gun inside 50 last night was outstanding, and Chris Dawes played his best game for a while, yeah, and he's had nine or ten possessions, but he still played really well. What he did, he got scaled up the ground out of the defensive 50, which allowed a lot of room for Tarrant, and uh, it wasn't Travis Cloak kicking five or six goals, but a lot of blokes who kicked two, three, he had 10 different goal kickers last night, and I reckon that was a lot because Dawes are so far up the ground. Yeah, Dawes' his work rate's one of his biggest things. He's one of the fittest blokes in the club. He's in the top five for all the time trials we do and that sort of thing. And, um, and Trav's obviously a workhorse and, and gets the job done each week. And Taz coming back was great to see him take a few marks. And I suppose we were back to the future. It was, uh, mm. it was really good. Ben, we take a look at the first uh, half highlights here. But uh, just we, you spoke about how good this first quarter was. Just take us through your midfield, watching them from, from obviously defence. Uh, you must love it. Uh, Beam, Swan, Pendlebury, they're all different. But uh, such a beautiful midfield you've got. Yeah, they all had something different in there. And um, it was pretty good having Pendles back, I suppose, from a yeah, cracked leg. And uh, he's come out in that 36 and looked like he hasn't missed any footy. So it was um, fantastic to have him back. And, the other boys uh, kept playing well as they have for the last month. And we just saw uh, young Elliot take a mark there. It's just the way young players step into the roles. They've been uh, fantastic so far this year. Yeah, they have. Um, you know, at the start of the year, we've had Lachlan Keith come in as a defender. And he did a great job. And you know, as the year's gone on, we've had you know, Jamie, um, Marley Williams, who came in as Sinclair. well. And Sinclair, is, you know, he's gone up another gear yeah. every week. So um, to have those boys come in and play their role every week, it makes it a lot easier. Pete Shaw probe played predominantly as a loose in the defensive end last night, but I've watched him a few times and even playing against him. Uh, he's the loudest player out in, in the defensive end for Collingwood. He looks like he just sets up your whole back line with uh, constant communication between a lot of you. Yeah, he is. He's, uh, I suppose he's probably the voice back there, along with Maxi. They're both um, you know, setting up things behind the ball and making sure they're in the right places, and you know, they're both in the leadership group for that reason. Now, you play predominantly in defence, but you've gone forward a couple of times this year. Can we see Ben Reid going forward and kicking a few more goals and, and maybe giving your brother a call and saying, I'm kicking more than you at the moment? <laughs> we had a pretty good one last week, so I can't <laughs> say too much for <laughs> at the moment. But, um, yeah, I'm not sure at the moment. I'm enjoying my, my role down back. And, um, you know, it's good to have Brandy back on the side last, last night as well. So it's, uh, it's going all right. And Dale Thomas, uh, we see, uh, is lively in front of goal and uh, had an injury throughout the week. But, uh, yeah, he was just when he's buzzing around, often he's a barometer for your side. Yeah, I think he had his foot in the ice bucket um, every day last week. Um, every time I saw him, he had the foot in the bucket. And um, to come out and kick three and the pressure that he put on was um, yeah, second to none. What about your, your kicking efficiency last night? was probably what won you the game. I mean, your, your structures were good, the way you won the footy, but all the stats were pretty even. Geelong, same uncontested, same contested. The tackles were very even. The inside 50s, I think Geelong had a couple more. Yeah. But uh, the way you guys used the footy going inside 50 was the major difference. Yeah, I think the week before we were pretty scrappy going forward against Carlton, so it was something we worked on during the week. And um, we're able to do that, and the midfielders probably um, get the praise for that. They moved the ball pretty well over the centre. Cats fired a couple of shots in the third quarter. Benny, uh, Joel Selwood went forward and kicked a goal, and looked like he kicked another one. 
with the video which uh, review, which seemed to take a long time. Did it for the players out there? Yeah, it was a pretty cold night, so I think all the boys are getting a bit cold out there. But um, yeah, obviously, you know, those things happen. But I suppose the, the best thing about it, they got the um, decision right in the end. Yeah. Well, what happened, Bill? In the first half, Harry O'Brien and Heath Shaw were the, were the predominantly loose for Collingwood. And up the other end, Motlop started as a loose. So there was a bit of an unbalance, but yeah. Collingwood got the best out of the loose defence. After half time, it was six on six in the forward line, and it made Collingwood uh, defend a lot more. And they kicked the first two, and they were looking pretty good. Uh, how do you adapt to that when you've had a loose man for the first half of the game, and then all of a sudden you're six on six? Do, does Bucks try and orchestrate that loose man, or you just go six on six and say we'll beat them on their merits? Yeah, pretty much just try and beat them on their merits. When they've got six forwards, we have the six backs, and um, you know, obviously if we can do that, we, we're going to. You know, probably help the team more than anything. So it's, and also it comes down to midfield pressure. If the pressure's on, it makes the job a lot easier. Good to have this man back who's about to take a mark here because uh, you can swing him forward or you can swing him back. Great to have Taz back. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, he kicked a couple of goals and he, he looked pretty good in the air as well. And he's a strong guy one on one. So I think if he gets any defender one out, he's, uh, he's a good chance to mark it. Did you get on him for a first goal? Uh, no, I didn't. <laughs> uh, Bill, uh, Geelong's best player was uh, Tommy Lonigan. Yes. He's, uh, just gives his all every week and uh, got the better of Travis Cloak. Cloak just had the nine disposals yesterday. Mm. How are Cloak and Dawes holding up mentally? Because they must have had a frustrating month or so, both of those two. Yeah, they have. But um, I suppose that what they're doing is they're putting that pressure on the forward line still and doing the defensive stuff that, um, and creating contests to get in the ball to ground, which is all we can ask from them. So, if they can keep doing that, I'm sure it's going to click sooner rather than later. See there, uh, Nathan Brown was on Tom Hawkins. How does it work uh, it? throughout a week in regards to the matchups for you? And uh, obviously, there's the number one forward. How does it work? Who takes him generally out of yourself and Nathan Brown? Uh, it changes week to week. Yeah. I suppose it's, uh, it's one of those things. You know, one week I might have the number one, or Brandy might have him. Um, I suppose it comes down to Bucks, and he lets us know in the middle of the week. And um, yeah, last night it fell to Brandy. Okay, uh, in. Um Brownie's made his way over there from uh, next year. What do you got to tell us, Brownie? Scoob, there's always little interest because in the game. And I said how the, the inside 50s are the same. Possessions contested-wise, tacklers are all the same. So how does Collingwood get to a 56-point lead and be winning by so much? And Bill, I'll ask you, they, they, Geelong love Matty Scarlett inside the defensive 50 yep. to be either the third man in or control the defensive end. Yep. What Collingwood did last night, and in particular Dawes, Dawes got up outside of 50 and Scarlett had to go with him. So... When you go back and there's so much space behind you where Scarlett isn't, it forces uh, Geelong to go one-on-one. -on -one. And they got caught out a couple of times. I'll show a couple of highlights of Chris Dawes particularly. As we see he's short sure, as the loose man. Chris Dawes all the way up. So this is Matty Scarlett here. So, I mean, nothing comes of this. They don't kick a goal, but this happened all night as we roll the tape. He sure run out and kicked this. And uh, Chris Dawes did this all night. Got right up the ground, got Matty Scarlett out of his comfort zone. As uh, Heshaw goes forward, we go to the next one. Here's Chris Dawes again, leading up the middle, bringing Matty Scarlett. Have a look at all the space. Have a look at the players bursting back into space as we keep rolling the tape. Matty Scarlett up the ground. Brendan Whitecross did this to him last year in a game, and it worked really well. The kick goes wide. Not much happens of it. But then this one again. This is late in the game. Chris Dawes leads up. Gets, all, uh, gets on uh, Matty Scarlett again. Look at the space over the back. When Chris Dawes gets Matty, Matty Scarlett loved to be here patrolling the back end. But uh, that was certainly what they did up the defence, uh, up the forward end. So Chris Dawes, very good, getting Matty Scarlett out of the defensive zone. And the other one was the loose man. We saw last week how Carlton did a really good job on Maxwell. They did it on Shaw and they also did it on O'Brien. Last night I was amazed that Chris Scott allowed... Uh, Harry O'Brien and Heath Shaws. We'll watch a couple of highlights here. There's only a couple, but Harry O'Brien just sitting in the hole on his own every day of the week. This man here, Chappie, they'd love a one-on-one -on -one there. They kick it in. Here's Harry O'Brien again, one, uh, just sitting in the hole. So much space. It's very hard for Geelong to pinpoint, uh, pinpoint passes. The ball goes in. And then after half time, I spoke about after half time the fact that Chris Scott changed it around. He went one on one, went man on man. And this is very early in the third quarter. Geelong actually won the second half. And we watched the first one. The ball goes in. The Cats have got it. There looks to be so much more space when they're going one on one. When the loose isn't back, Harry O'Brien's made to defend. As we see Harry O'Brien, he's on Joel Selwood. Joel Selwood leads him up at the footy. That's where Harry O'Brien's in. He, he's not comfortable playing on somebody who's leading up. So they got it all in their own terms in the first half, Collingwood, and that's what set up their victory. What do you think of that, Ben? Uh, mm. If he was talking to you at half-time, <laughs> the MCG, you know, in a preliminary final, 
you take note of that? Yeah, it wasn't too bad, actually. A couple of those things were probably a few things we pointed out. So, well done, Brownie. <laughs> thanks, thanks Reddy. <laughs> Very good work. What about the uh, votes, Brownie, if you can? Yeah, the votes. I thought that these guys were outstanding. He sure was best on ground. Beams was really good again. Swan had 40 disposals. Billing was very good. And Tommy Lonigan <coughs> was the Cats player who got the votes. Bunt the head. The Geelong team have got Essendon, Adelaide, Hawthorne and West Coast. We've already discussed that. That's a pretty big month for them. Colling, we've got a blockbuster next week. And then they've got the greater we said Sydney, St Kilda and Sydney. Fantastic. Ben, thank you for coming in. No Enjoy the blockbuster week with the big build-up uh, to Collingwood against Hawthorne next weekend.